Nathan Cox, thanks for joining us around the home. Today I'm going to give you guys um, a whole slew of tips on how to put up your own above ground pool. Now take a look at that. Now this is what a lot of people really want in their backyard, especially with the cost of in-ground pools and with all the lockdowns and COVID-19 stuff. You just want a place at your own house where you can go swim in, not have to worry about people or anything else. All right, so one of the first things I'm gonna tell you about this video is that I have chapters built into it, okay? So not only in the description down below can you click different time marks to go to different parts, so you can jump ahead. I wouldn't recommend jumping around ahead too much, but it makes it really easy to go back and review. Be like, oh wait, what do you say about that part? Okay, and it's also right there in your timeline. Awesome feature of YouTube. You can see it right there in your timeline. Jump around so easy. And as you can see, my pool is already up. So this is not like a before and after you see me doing all the work. Um, I don't have any uh, actual shots while we're doing the work, okay? So if you're looking for that, I'm, I'm sorry I don't have that, but I'm not a professional pool installer, and this is our first time putting it up. So I'm gonna go through all the different steps, and I'm gonna show you, I'll have reference pictures from instructions, and other stuff like that, and I'll, I'll give you the tips on what I learned, and the mistakes I made, because I did almost every step twice, okay? So I'm gonna do a pretty good job of showing you guys how it's supposed to go together and what problems I had and hopefully help you get past your problems. Okay, so the instructions, I think this should be like my first part of the video, first step. The instructions suck, okay? There are some good points in the instructions, but I found that my instructions were incomplete, out of date, the pool company, uh, now this is for a Vogue pool, uh, V-O-G-U-E, I think, or anyways, there, you know, like there's the uh, name of the pool right there. Um, and I actually got sent the wrong series instructions from the pool company. They forwarded it to me in a PDF, emailed it to me, so I could get, start getting things ready for this pool, and then sent it for the wrong series. But it looked like the exact same thing. It looked right, and in, in there, you know, it's got like, like the five or six different sizes of pools, you know, the, the 18 foot, the 21 foot, the 23 foot, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So it, it looked like my pool. But when I, when I uh, started getting together, I had 15 posts here, these posts right here. But the instructions were only telling me I had 14. And they're very specific on how you, know, how you lay them out and the distance you know, on, on the bottom rail in, in the caps and stuff like that for what size pool you have. So every, you know, and I have, I'll get to that in a minute. But so everything was kind of already lined up wrong when I was going to install it in the first place. So I'm gonna do something crazy, is I've got the DVD uh, from there, so in case you guys like need it, you wanna double check that you have the right series for your pool, um, I will have on my website, and there'll be a link in the description down below for that as well, okay? Um, so where you find this video on my website, right next to it, I will have uh, instructions, downloadable instructions in the PDF forms on there for every series of the pool. So make sure you got the right instructions for your series pool. That's like the first step. Okay, that's really important that you have the right instructions. But like I said, there was things that were not updated in this because there's some changes that were made on this that weren't reflected in the instructions. So we got there, we're like, uh, and then we got the upgraded liner, okay? Uh, which obviously we'll, we'll talk about more later, but there was like no instructions for that at all. Uh, there's no instructions for that, you know, in the, the main instructions. And then with the upgraded liner, there was like nothing there. So we ended up doing that wrong too, of course. I had to redo that. So it's like, whew, whew. okay. So the first thing to start doing when you install this pool is make sure that you've got a level, you know, level spot of ground, okay? It's gotta be very level. So some of your, your best friends on this part here, which I wish I would have known in the beginning, is gonna be just a big ruler stick like this, okay? This is just a straight edge ruler, okay? It's metal, you can see all the measurements on it. All right, it's, um, this one here is like 72 inches long and a laser level, okay? Now this isn't some fancy expensive like $400 laser level. Uh, this is actually one of them that was sent to me to review and I didn't even give it that great of ra uh, ratings, but I think I'll find this Amazon link because it does work fairly well and I could see it against this yellow bar, even in the daytime, it just makes a dot, okay? If you want a line, you gotta, you gotta get really expensive. Now, of course, the whole area has to be fairly level, but the center of the pool doesn't have to be perfectly level uh, because we're gonna fix that with the sand later, okay? But you gotta concentrate, it's what we're gonna call the ring area here. So important, because that's where the wall sits, that's where this track that the wall sits into sits, and all these posts sit on there too, okay? And you'll see that there's like little bricks here. 
These are just your standard 12 inch by 12 inch by inch and a half uh, pavers you can get in the garden department at uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, Menards, whatever, okay? Very standard, but we set them down, okay? Now all this ground here is exactly level, so obviously these have to be set down into the ground because this track has to sit on there. And trust me, if this ring area here is that, I mean, you gotta check it like every, every like six inches or something like that, uh, because if it's not perfectly level, then this track is gonna be e either lifted up or, or just floating in the air. And when you go to put the wall into it, it's gonna be a mess, okay? So this, this bottom track here has to be supported and perfectly level all the way around, all right? And obviously you can see here we had to dig out, so you gotta give yourself some room to work. So, sure, I have a, a pool that's got a 21 foot diameter and it was almost perfect uh, 21 foot to the, to the right there where the wall sits. I mean, it really is. Uh, the radius was 11 and a half feet. I'm sorry, 10 and a half feet, sorry. But it was really spot on to the right there where the wall goes on the inside of the track. So if you gotta bring a tractor in, I had to bring a small tractor in called a Dingo. It's a walk behind. That way I could you know work it inside the circle without destroying my entire yard. Show you a picture of what one looks like here. I rented it at my local reno center um, and it rented me about $200 a day uh, with, with the trailer. But I had rented it twice. Again, like I said earlier, I've done almost everything on this thing twice because I thought I had it pretty darn level and you know, and I had it real flat. I was exhausted. I didn't have my laser system out here yet, okay? I, I was just kind of doing some eyeballing, doing some, I had a two foot level and I thought, okay, this is pretty close. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go with it. But this Southwest Missouri, there is so much rocks. This is rock and clay and the hardest soil to ever work with. So I realized when I put the laser level in and put the laser level here in the center of the circle, which you know, you wanna find your center point and mark it, put that right in there. And I was going around with this around trying to, to see how bad I was. I was still off by like five inches from the lowest side to the highest side. And that's just not gonna fly. So like I said a minute ago, that ring, that outer ring's gotta be perfect. So when I finally got back and redid the tractor again, then came back and cleaned it up by hand, I made sure as I went around, especially I, I focused on, really focused on the 15 posts, okay? And where the bricks were gonna go. And I made sure that I didn't even change an eighth of an inch on this, okay? I made sure they were spot on and then fixed the dirt in between all the bricks as I went around that ring um, and made it just leveled out. Then you're gonna assemble that, that track. You're gonna take that bottom track and lay it out with all those caps, okay? So to help keep it center point, um, and I used it to help like level the sand, which I'll explain in a minute, I used a half inch by three foot steel rod, which I just found my center point of this pool and drove it into the ground, you know, leaving, uh, a foot, uh, you know, a little more than a foot hanging out, you know, probably a foot and a half. So I probably put half of it in the ground, okay? And that was able to, and then I was able to measure my radius of 10 and a half feet all the way around. And that's really a good way to make sure that you're perfectly round when you're setting that, that base track around. But you obviously, you're gonna need two people at that part. Um, actually, a lot of this pool, you're gonna need at least two people um, until you get to the wall, and then you're gonna need a lot more than that. So working the laser level, I mean, sure you can do it with one person, but it goes, three times faster with two people because you can have the one person moving the measuring stick while the other person's moving the laser level and, and making sure everything is right. So you've kind of assembled that lower track a little bit to make sure you've got the circle, to make sure that ring is level, you know, all the way around. But now we're gonna open up a section so you can bring in your wheelbarrows, your wagons, whatever, and, uh, and bring in your sand, okay? And you want, you want to add like three inches of sand plus a cove area, okay? So, when you bring in the sand, you're gonna kind of pile it in and then just start leveling. Okay. So you wanna like, you know, distribute it throughout the circle. Now how are you gonna level the sand um, to make sure that's nice and flat? The sand, okay, and here's another thing. The sand doesn't have to be 100% level, but it needs to be 100% flat. I'll explain that here in a second. So using that steel rod that's still shoved in the ground, okay, I took a two by six. Given that this pool is got a 10 and a half foot radius, I used a, a two by six by 10, okay? I drilled, took the two by six on the flat side and drilled right down through the center and then took the board and set it over that rod so that the board could move like this. I'm not sure which imagery you guys are gonna like better, 
me, you know, walking around like I'm a giant like sprinkler arm or something like that. But so that's how you do it. So you use that board and you, as you push it around, it's going to level out that sand. And it's okay that it's a couple inches short of where the wall goes. You want to leave that area actually blank the last like five inches because that's where you're going to build your cove. And I'll explain that here in, in a second. So to help make sure that the sand is mostly level, go ahead and duct tape a level to that two by six, which is, it's going to want to be level. It's want to going to kind of level itself anyways. Okay. It really is. And one trick I used as I was taking that board and going around again and again, and I had people helping me move the sand is get yourself a, a steel rake or two. Okay, so you got someone, I got someone here kind of brushing the, the, the sand and helping to move it as I'm, I'm pushing that two by six around. But rather than honking down and breaking my back, you know, the whole time trying to drag it, I used another steel rake, locked it on the end of that two by six and just pulled it. And just kept pulling it around in the circle. Use that steel rake just to hook onto the end of the two by six. Actually worked pretty good. I wish I had pictures and videos of this, but I didn't know what I was doing. And trying to make a video explaining to people how to do something when you're doing it for the first time and don't know how to do it. I'm just, like I said, just giving you guys my best tips afterwards. Okay, now, why did we leave like five inches blank there right up against the, uh, the bottom track? You know, right where the wall is gonna go? It's because you gotta build a cove, okay? So we don't want the wall to be, you know, here, standing up and your, your, your sand just to kind of hit it. We don't want the liner to get, get wedged in between the wall and the sand. That's why we don't want it, the, the liner to get, you know, flexed down in there. So you build a cove, which is basically just a wedge, okay? That's like four inches by four inches high. It's, it's just like a 45 degree wedge. That's, that's really all it is. It's very important to do. So, but that's done after the wall is assembled, okay? So after you've got your sand nice and level, you're gonna take some sand I know, you're like, I just did all this hard work. Then you're gonna take some more sand and toss it right there in the center of the circle, okay? Right next to where your, your rod is. Doesn't have to be, just put it right next, kind of next to the rod, just off to the side, just a hair, okay? All right, so let me end with this on the leveling of the sand. I know I said it doesn't have to be 100% level, but it needs to be 100% flat. Let me explain that here, let me, let me finalize this, okay? So if your sand base inside the pool, you know, your walls are gonna be exactly level, so that one side's not low and holding a lot of extra weight because of, of the, the, the downhill force of the water. It also makes sure that when your pool was full, you know, you got enough water in your skimmer and stuff like that. That's why the walls have to be totally leveled. You know, they can't be like this or like that. Now the very bottom of the pool in the center, if it's off by just a little bit here or there, it's not gonna be a big deal. It's really not. But it's gotta be flat because once you get it like finished, if you're walking around you're like oh i got a little dimple here you know <laughs> you know and if you have any kind of vacuums or something like that they're gonna have troubles doing you know getting in and out and stuff like that and then we also have if you depending on what kind of ladder or if you got the wedding cake steps if you did like the full upgrade you got the wedding cake steps they're gonna not sit level okay so you gotta have it flat and smooth okay you know you're gonna feel it if you don't get it like that so that's why it really needs to be really really flat now let's talk about assembling the wall okay now this part is a beast and two people is not going to cut it there is a little old video which i think was made 20 years ago on the dvd of them assembling the wall and it's just got two dudes in it and then you got the one dude kind of like helping to hold the end and the other dude's just casually rolling it out like it's no big deal okay i call serious bull on that okay no no okay that's not happening. Okay, I, I don't even know how, how that was done. Um, and I don't know if they were using like the resin wall or something like that, uh, maybe it's lighter. This is a steel wall, 21 foot pool, okay? Now I can lift, I, I can deadlift like probably, I, like, and I'm not talking about like at the gym, I'm talking about just grabbing something and lifting it up. I could probably, you know, deadlift like 200 pounds, okay? Without, without busting my nut. Taking this wall and just standing it up, not deadlifting it, just standing up one end so it'll stand. I almost busted a nut, okay? Very heavy wall. I'm guessing that this wall is like pushing 400 pounds, okay? So obviously you're using a dolly to move the thing and you're having someone help support it so it doesn't fall off 
and when you get it into the area here, you got to bring it into the center area, of the, not to the center of the pool, but inside the pool area there where your sand is, all right? Now, up to this point, two people were fine working on the pool. At this point, no, you're going to need like six, okay? We originally tried it with four, and it did not work so well. So when we did it the second time, we, we, did, we did two different things. Um, one of them was adding two more people, okay? And then the other thing was, is on that ring, because our, our first biggest problem was when we were trying to roll out that wall, that bottom ring, you know, they said initially you can use some nails to kind of hold it in place before you put like the, you know, the, the brick pavers in, but then take the nails out. When we started putting that wall in that ring, it started moving and coming out of the caps and separating on us, and it was a mess, and we almost folded that wall in twice on itself. And when that metal wall, that metal wall folds in on itself, that's just bad, that's just bad. Trying to get that unfold and get that, 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 that crease out is not something you wanna to have to do, okay? So what I did is before we got the extra people back, I reassembled the ring, make sure it was perfectly uh, you know, centered with my center point and I had a nice circle and I took cement screws, okay? I took my hammer drill and I actually went in the, those, those, those base plates for the posts and each one of those and put one cement screw in on them so they held tight. Okay, now the instructions don't want you to anchor those down because the wall needs to hold the weight of the water. Okay, so when the wall expands and, and it's straight out and the wall, you know, it's filled and the water pushes against it, that's what's holding the water weight. So it doesn't want those, those posts to be like maybe off by just a little bit and kind of holding it off and causing like, uh, you know, dimples in the pool, you know, causing other force to make it like want to collapse or, or buckle in, that's a better word, buckle in on itself. So, you can put those cement screws in, those base caps to help you get the wall up, but as you're putting the posts together, get those screws back out, okay? Don't have, don't leave any screws in there. Now, as you, before you start to roll it out, know that you gotta have to know where the skimmer hole is gonna go, where your pump and everything is gonna be set up at, okay? And the instructions say that the hole for the skimmer is gonna be at the very end of the roll, okay? Mine kind of was, but wasn't at the same point time. Here's another example of something that was changed on the pool, but not updated in the instructions. And so instead of having just one big, you know, roll of pool with the holes cut out on the very end, I had one big roll of pool with a three foot section there. So I've actually got two seams on mine. And this little three foot section is where the skimmer hole, you know, and the return jet are, all right? So you gotta know where those are gonna go uh, so basically, so start and end your pool, you know, where your pump needs to go. Also, you know, and I don't know how to tell you without kind of unrolling it a lot, almost all the way to see if you have that three foot section at the end and then rolling it back and standing it up. But if you do so, you've got to put one of those seams behind a post, okay, if you want it to be hidden. These seams are going to have like 20 screws down it uh, and they only give you like one little cover strip. So if you want both seams, and luckily we just started right where a post was. I don't know how that worked. Because when we got to the end, we're like, oh crap. You know, there's like two seams here, but one of them started right there in the center of a post. So the post covered it. So that, that worked out well. All right, so how are you gonna line your people out? You're gonna, you know, roll out the wall just, just like a couple of feet and get started in the track. And then you're gonna slowly keep rolling while you're on the board. That's where the two boards come in handy. Because then as you keep rolling, and you keep slightly inserting it in, into the ring, then you're gonna move the second board. So you take the first board and then you know, move it over to the next one. So you can keep rolling on the board. This way we didn't destroy any sand at all, okay? We, had, we just had some footprints in the sand, uh, which we obviously fixed before we got out. But you're gonna keep rolling the wall out. And the reason why you need six people is that roll is stinking heavy, okay? So we had two people rolling the wall, okay, rolling it out. With, with a third person kind of helping to put it, you know, into the track, you know, and then running to move the boards, okay? So two people just rolling this thing and keeping it from falling over or unrolling or doing something crazy. One person there putting it in the track and the other three people are holding it as it goes up because you don't want it folding down. So obviously there's a couple of people who won't be doing anything right away. So the first person's holding the end and as you get like, you know, 10 feet out or, or less than 10 feet out, you know, stick another person and then keep going and stick another person. As it starts to go into the track, you can kind of space those other two people out a little bit more, leaving the one person at, at the beginning. Now you can also use hooks, you know, stick a hook on the wall and stick it in a stake and pull it over to keep the wall from, from folding in. Um, but that's, 
that's just not always an easy thing to do. And they say use vinyl coated hooks and they show this stuff. I can't find vinyl coated hooks anywhere. Not at Lowe's or Home Depot, not on, on, on Amazon. Okay, so just, just get hands. Just, it's just easier with hands. Okay, something I probably should mention right off the bat is that, so we were talking about the wall collapsing on itself. Do not start this project at the end of the day. Do not start this part of it. We, on the first day, we were fighting with it, fighting with it, and it was gonna be six o'clock. I called it and I said, no, we have to stop. Okay, my wife got mad, but she didn't you know, realize, I mean, of course she was upset the whole thing, but she thought I was just quitting, but she didn't realize that once you start, you have to finish. You gotta get that wall in the ring, you gotta get the posts on, the liner in, and starting to fill so the pool's not collapsing. You don't want some breeze to fold down the wall, okay? And then ruin the pool. So this is a, you're either gonna do it or you're not. Okay, so let me show you what one of the seams look like. You can see here, it's got tons of screws and they're not all spaced out exactly the same. You know, we got all these right here that are really tight and there's the gap and there's the two that are kind of spaced out. Then they get tight again down there, okay? So when you line everything up, don't just stick it on there. So you're gonna have, you're gonna have a wall you have a wall, okay, so they're gonna fold over each other with the holes, and then you're gonna have a little metal, you know, kind of a, just a, a metal binding beam on each side, and then the screws, and it's gonna sandwich it all together. Then there was this U-track, okay, which took a while to figure out how that lined up with the holes, which I assume hold the cap on, but the cap doesn't sit tight on this. So that's another thing I've gotta modify. And the instructions also said nothing about this, okay? Now on mine with the two seams, these screws holding it together, I got two lengths of screws. A slightly shorter one and a slightly longer one. And so I assumed that the shorter ones went with the, you know, the one over there that I got hidden behind the, the, uh, the post. And then with the slightly longer ones here, because it's got the extra, you know, U-channel here. But honestly, it's not needed. The shorter ones would have been plenty long enough to do this. When you get to this part here, here's a couple more tricks. You gotta get these holes lined up like perfectly. And you've got four, and this one's actually got five layers with the U, uh, with the new U channel there. Okay, because you got the binder bar, the one part of the wall, the other part of the wall, the other binder bar, and then the U channel, okay? And you gotta get those holes all lined up to get that, that, that bolt through. So I used a, um, a nail set, which is like a small hole punch. There's a picture of one right there. And I stuck it in the hole below and kind of forced it in and kind of wiggled it to kind of force the, uh, the panels to line up perfectly so you can stick the bolt through. You might want to take your, your drill and kind of you know, run it through and kind of make the bolt kind of force through. But by doing so, these are stainless steel bolts. And someone's like, oh, yeah, of course they're stainless steel. You want the rust that's a pull. But stainless steel is softer than regular steel, okay? So the threads got messed up really easy by doing that. So you gotta be real careful uh, about trying to use the drill to, to force the bolt to screw itself through because when you put the nut on there It's probably gonna cross thread because of all that also make sure you got the right size bit These were a Phillips, you know head, but they were a Phillips 3 So if you're using a Phillips 2 bit, you know on it, it's gonna kind of work But you're definitely gonna strip it out a lot faster uh, than using a Phillips 3 that's gonna fit really snug in there And I will say one more thing which I'm a little leery of saying but I'll be honest that I did it is that I had like bolts here on both of these and I even had them on the top and the bottom but I had a few of them in the, like in a couple spots that I just could not even with that punch and trying to force all of them I couldn't get it to line up 100% and I'd already screwed up a bunch of bolts and we had to go back to the store to get more okay so at this point here the hole was off by just a fraction okay and when I say a fraction I mean a fraction I don't mean like the two circles like were like this I mean they were like so close you know so I cheated, and, and I, I, I'm saying, that you, I'm not suggesting you just do this for every, I absolutely do not do this for every hole. Um, and be, I'm saying this with a grain of salt, okay? But I took a drill bit. At that point, I was just like, screw it, I'm tired. Why won't these line up 100%? And I think it was a quarter inch, which was, made it, made the, was tight with the hole. So figure out what, what is exactly that hole size I think it was a quarter inch drill bit and I just shoved the drill bit in there to clean out the hole so that all four layers would line up perfectly so I could stick the bolt through without screwing it up again. Okay, so I did cheat on a couple holes, but it wasn't, I didn't start off that way. Definitely don't start off that way. Like I said, they, they were off by just a, a little bit, not, not like crazy off. I wasn't drilling new holes in there. And then before you put the liner in, you got to cover those screw, all those screw heads on the inside. And they show just doing it with duct tape. And that's not bad. 
Um, something I wish I would have done is because I stripped out a lot of those heads because the stainless steel is just soft um, and it made them kind of sharp. I should have taken a file and kind of cleaned them off a little bit, uh, the real pokey ones. I used a really high quality actual duct, ducting, duct tape, you know, that people use for duct work. It's, it's much stronger and, and thicker um, than your standard 3M or duct brand uh, duct tapes. And I did three layers over the heads. I did one kind of offset to the left, but over the heads, one offset to the right, and one right, you know, perfectly centered. Um, and I wish I would have done like a, at least another layer, to be honest. You can still kind of feel the pokiness through the on the liner on a few of them, and that worries me a little bit. So take, and I, I, was, we, I had a lot of people over here, and we're trying to move to the next step. So I, I just, I was just trying to, and it was really hot. My, my mind was melting. Okay, but do take a moment, another moment, and make sure that there's nothing pokey through that, that duct tape, okay? Because we don't want the liner to be damaged down the road. Okay, now at this point, depending on which kind of liner you have, if you have the standard base liner or the upgraded liner, you know, this part's gonna be a little bit different for, for you. Um, if you have the, the base liner, the instructions do mention some stuff about it. You're basically gonna take the liner and fold it over the wall and put the top rail on and put the, uh, connect the top rail with, with the caps and then assemble the posts, okay? And that part's fairly straightforward. Now I have the upgraded liner, um, so it's not reflected in the instructions at all, and they didn't have his own instructions with it. It just had the warning label stuff, okay, which is great. So there's this white track, it's about, you know, yay, yay uh, tall, yeah, it's like three feet long, maybe a little bit more, all right? And the, when I had some people over here helping me, we took like the top rail and then, you know, that white track just slid right in there and locked in. We thought, okay, that's amazing, that's great. So we did that, and then we snapped it all around, okay? The first time we, we did it, there were some gaps right there where all, all the posts were, a couple inches. So I figured that's because it's the post gap, and who cares if there's like a three or four inch gap, it's probably not a big deal. And then, you know, you could take the, that plastic strip and kind of use a screwdriver, and I opened it up a little bit, and fit the, uh, the liner, because the liner has kind of, a, it's kind of a J-hook on top of the upgraded liner and we just stuck that in there all the way around. Seemed to work okay. Started filling the water, you know, and the track is of course flexing, that white track is flexing, um, you know, especially where those gaps were, okay? So we put duct tape to help hold those up, because I thought, well, once it gets full and the liner stretched and just pushed it against the wall, those would probably be okay. But my wife kept uh, really stressing about it and she had good intuition and I, I love her for that. So she went down to the pool place and said, hey, I feel like something's wrong here. She came back crying hysterically almost, uh, well, pretty much. She said that we did it completely wrong. We have to drain the whole pool and start over. Um, you know, and this has been a long, long process. Very exhausting, very emotionally draining, okay? <laughs> okay, so let me tell you, that white track, first of all, does not go into that top rail. Even though it looks like you can just slide it in there and it locks in tight, which it does, it actually goes over the wall. So we had it, we, not only did we have the gap problems, because uh, we, we did have two sticks left over, we thought, oh, they just sent us an extra one or whatever. That was, that was stupid to think that, because there was no extra parts in this pool whatsoever. But, but second of all, it was upside down. So that, that little edge that, that was really tight, um, <laughs> um, I, I used a screwdriver to pull out to stick that, that J-channel, you know, that J-lip in, um, actually folds over the wall. So you wanna use that long side and, and fold it over the wall. And then that big open part of the track that's now gonna sit there on the inside of the pool, you're like, well, that, J, that, J, that little J-lip of, of the pool liner doesn't sit in there. That's right, you gotta actually take the pool liner, stretch it up, fold it over, and then shove it in the hole. See, at the top of the liner, you shouldn't see this, the stone coloring all the way to the top. You shouldn't see any of that blank blue. All right, so here's that white track and then the pool liner is just folded over and shoved in and you should be actually almost like feel it click in. So it's, it's that, that lip kind of catching the inside lip of that, that white track, okay? So that's what it should look like when it's finished. Now, of course, we had this, this plastic, this finishing cap, okay, uh, already installed on the pool and we were filling it and it was like this four foot, you know, deep pool was already like two and a half feet deep, okay? All right, so of course you can see why the, the frustration and the, the, the freak out. So we had to take, um, we took section at a time of, of this cap off, open up the rail, you know, take the liner off, fix that white track, and then, 
and I was able to, to you know, I, I used the areas that was in the sun so that the liner could stretch more. I was able to kind of stretch it, fold it, and shove it in. And man, my, my fingertips and my thumbs were basically bleeding by the end of the night. But got it, you know, we, we started draining it, but realized that it was okay. We didn't have to keep draining it. Um, fixed it and moved on, but I, I'm making this so you guys hopefully don't have to have that same mistake. All right, so you can see how the finished upgraded liner works. Because that was an or ordeal, an ordeal, I tell you. Almost forgot, if you have the upgraded liner, you also have a foam pad to put down before you put the liner in, okay? Comes in a big roll, looks like this. That's what I have left over. So I had a lot left over. I was afraid this stuff was gonna like run short or you're gonna have to piece in it together, but I had a lot left over, okay? One nice thing, okay? Now, you roll it out in just, in just rows, okay, down on the pole, and it cuts really easy with, with a utility knife with a fresh blade. So I have someone over here, like, measuring and cutting it for you and bringing it back to the person who's in the pool over here. And then just seeing the, the, put the seams together with duct tape, hold everything together. Now, the pool company said, I said, well, do we take that up the cove or stop at the cove? And they said, stop at the cove, okay? That's what I did. So my foam pad is completely flat, but part of me, now that after I've done it, thinks I should have went up the cove, okay? Because in a lot of the areas, I got the cove here and the pad here, because the pad's taller than the sand, there's this little lip right here where the, the pad ends and it goes into the cove. So I think if it went up the cove and stopped at the wall, it would have been better. Um, I don't know what the official answer is on that, but if I had to do it over again, I would have taken the foam pad up the cove. And I tell you, the foam pad's nice. When you're walking around in the pool, it, it, it's like, it's, it's squishy. It, it's really nice. So the foam pad's amazing, okay? It is a really nice part of the upgraded liner. All right, so we're under the finished cap here. So you can see the top rail over the wall. Here's that white uh, track there for the upgraded liner, okay? So you can see how it hangs down the wall. And then when you put these posts on, they're pretty simple. They just tie in to the, to the, to the base and top caps, you know, and there's a notch here notched out. So it goes around the rail on the both the top and the bottom. And then you screw it, you know, screw it in, everything's tight, okay? This part here is actually pretty straightforward. Then the plastic caps are a two piece, okay? So you separate them out. You know, there's gonna be a little cap plug here. It's actually gonna be taped on the underside. So peel that out, this is covering the screw. Then we're gonna put, then this piece goes in, okay? There'll be a screw here that holds it in the middle, and, you know, and then you put the metal, the metal caps in beside it. And then right, this right here, this slides in. There's, there's two notches here, one on each side here and over here, which slide in there so that they, they kind of lock together. And then you have the screw in front, okay? And then you put the, or, I'm sorry, it's right would be behind there. And you put the cap in, all right? So, and then this, this notch goes underneath the rail here, so it wraps around. Just flex it around, it snaps in place, not a big deal. All right, next we move to the skimmer because I also did that wrong, okay? So you got the skimmer and the return jet, okay? So the return jet's got its own like little instructions and it shows how everything goes. So, you know, it, you, you separate it, it's got a couple parts. And then the important thing is, is, you know, obviously you just take a utility knife and as that liner is pushed up against, you know, before the water gets up to it, of course, um, but, you know, but just, use that utility knife and carefully cut that out, you know, push the liner up against there and do that. Then you're gonna have a silicone rubber washer, which goes, so you're gonna have the outside plastic piece and you have the silicone rubber washer and that goes on the inside of the pool against the liner. And then there's a paper washer that goes between the liner and the wall and a paper washer on the outside, okay? So put all those together and just snug it up pretty good. Don't go crazy, these are just plastic parts and they're not the very best plastic parts in the world. But on the skimmer, this is what makes me mad because in that stupid little video that they show, this is one of the few things that weren't 20 feet away, okay? It showed them putting the, the rubber washer around the metal wall, okay? So it's, it's the full like rectangle, right? And then it, it's kind of hewed, so it, it's, got, it's sealed there in the middle and then it goes around, you know, around the wall like, like so. It sandwiches around the wall, but they show you doing it around the wall and the vinyl liner on front of that, and then sandwiching the, the parts of the skimmer together, okay? And then it leaked, it leaked like a sieve. And I thought, well, why does the rubber seal go on the outside here 
uh, of the liner, but not on the outside liner over here. Okay, what well, really needs to. So I pulled it back apart. I had to drain the pool, of course, again, and then, <laughs> and then take that rubber, rubber, the rubber, the silicone rubber gasket, and then put the, you know, so I got the wall, the metal wall, and then the liner, and then put that gasket around both those together. Put it back together, carefully, not trying to strip that that stainless steel hardware. And guess what? Perfect. Works perfect. So suck it instructions. All right, now let's talk about the pump and if you have the additional chlorinator, okay? So there's no chlorinator, just goes here on the return. All right, it just screws right on there. And there's a little adapter that supposedly came with it to help push it out. And I, I put it, I, at first I, I didn't have it at first. And I put it, this together. You can see here, there's this big nut on the chlorinator, which you just screw on over this. You can see there's a little screw there holding together. So it's a two piece nut because this is a chlorinator to help. So I guess it, it, I'm sure it's easier to make, to make it like this and then just make that two piece nut and then so it'll spin around. And then there's a rubber, uh, a rubber gasket o-ring. It's not quite an o-ring uh, that, that fits inside here to seal it. Okay. Just like a, like a garden hose. I screwed this on and I realized I didn't have the adapter. I screwed it off and screwed it back on and then it snapped because it was just two little screws into the plastic threads. So I had to put two bolts in with nuts on the back side to fix it. All right, so that thing was sucked. The little adapter that pushes this out further, pushes it out so this handle can spin around as you go to different things. It still hits this here. Okay, so I gotta unscrew this like little cap here, this little air relief, so I can screw this all the way around to make it to the back wash position. Okay, that sucks. It just sucks. Also, all these threaded fittings. Now this one here has a rubber gasket, but the one for the adapter here, the ones for the hoses, okay, they all kind of suck. Uh, they seem to, they're kind of sloppy, so I took a really high-end like thread tape and had to wrap it multiple, multiple times, okay? Now these ends here, you're going to have some of these adapters that are smooth and some that have barbs, okay? So smooth ones go with this, this gray plastic hose, okay? And the barbed ones go with that rubber hose, that rubber, someone might call it a corrugated, it's just that, that thick, crazy rubber hose over there. And there's another angle so you can see how it goes in the pump. So the pump just goes on the stand, and then you're gonna have the hose, you know, it says pump right here. You know, this is the filter, obviously. So it goes from the pump to the filter, and then the return back, back to the pool, okay? So this setup here is pretty, it's just a very simple loop. Assembling this wasn't hard. You did have to, you know, take that tube that was in the middle and put all those little, uh, what, I don't know what they called them. They call them feeder lines or whatever on there and set it in there. And when you pour the sand in there, you wanna make sure that the cap is over that pipe because you don't want sand going down the pipe at all, okay? And the weird thing is, another thing with the instructions is this pump said it wanted 200 pounds of sand. The pool company gave us 150. So my wife went back there and said, hey, what's up? Is this another instruction mistake, another update that wasn't updated? And they said that they did get that update change here like a year ago, but when they put the 200 pounds of sand, it like filled this, this tank here, the, the sand filter like all the way to the top. You know, and so that's a, interesting thing about the instructions because instructions do say that the sand should stop about here and that is about where the 150 pounds of sand stops but it was confusing because not only on the label here but in the instructions it says 200 pounds of sand which would take it to the top so we did the 150 down to here which is where it ought to be that's just another amazing thing with the instructions for this stuff if you're wondering what's this white goop stuff here well i used a bunch of that thread tape there it's still leaking a little bit so like, oh, that's amazing so that's just a a good uh, thread sealer you know I'll show you a can of it here that's what it looks like and I gooped that on on top of the tape so that that would stop dripping okay now as you think my problem stopped there because by now I've redone everything like twice right I really have <laughs> and and the water's filling up and it's into the skimmer by now and the pumps together it's finally working because even when my wife was talking about the pump she goes are we gonna get the pump up and running today I said well, well I hope so I never said yes you know, after the first couple steps of this pull, because as much as I wanted to, nothing ever worked out exactly right the first time. So let's move on, because we got the fully upgraded package, so because we wanted this to be much better than, you know, a Walmart pull. Um, so we got the wedding cake steps on the inside, which makes it easier for the children, especially and especially for the old people. So when mother-in-law comes in, you know, hopefully she's not falling in or complaining too much at least. Try to keep those complaints down, you know? 
All right, so there's our steps. There's the wedding cake steps. And you can kind of see right over there, there's like a little circle. That's a little cylinder that holds sand away down. It tells you to get play sand. Very simple thing to get at any hardware store over the construction side. Okay, it's just, play sand is just cleaner than, than all-purpose sand. You know, I, I reckon that all-purpose sand would even work as well. But the problem is, it only holds 17 pounds of sand. You know, we got this 50 pound bag of sand and then the instructions say, oh yeah, this will hold 17 pounds. This plastic thing wants to float. It wants to float, it wants to move around. 17 pounds just ain't doing it right. And then we found that there's like so many videos about these pull steps that aren't sitting right and you don't want them constantly moving because you don't want them to like make uh, little little dents in, in the, the pool floor. You don't want them to tear the liner. There are suction cups on the bottom of this thing, okay? There's like, I think there's like six feet on this thing, maybe seven, and each one has a suction cup. This is another thing about getting the pool uh, very level and flat, not just level but flat. But then when you're filling up the liner, you don't want any wrinkles in there. So you gotta work it, um, not only just so it doesn't look bad, but if there's a wrinkle here, that suction cup ain't suctioning. And to completely tell you the truth, with that foam pad you put down, it makes a little bit of a, a rippled surface on the liner, um, which I don't think makes it easy for those suction cups to hold down as well. Okay, so even though this bar here is screwed to the deck, um, you know, this whole <laughs> the thing moves and moves. There's just not enough weight on it. And these videos explain that you probably want like 100 to 150 pounds of weight holding it down, not 17. So you, there are bags, I guess, the pool place said that you can get, uh, that they carry, that you can put sand in, and then there are additional holes in here you can tie it to. The, the biggest thing is, is when you set this thing in, you don't just drop it straight in. You want to put it in and put it sideways. Okay, so you get all the air out of the bottom. The whole bottom is hollow. I wish it wasn't all hollow, so I could just put like a sandbag, you know, down on the bottom, but you, there's nothing there. Okay, so tip it on the side and, and, you know, wiggle it around, make sure that all the air is out. And there are a couple of holes on the top step, you know, so if you keep wiggling around, you can get the air out, but the thing is just too light, okay? Okay, the deck. Now the deck's not really, like, necessarily part of the pool, but if you have the upgraded steps, you got to have something here because there's no ladder attachment that works. Okay, maybe you just want more kind of a deck. And instead of a deck with stairs, I did a deck with a ladder because honestly at this height, I would have needed like seven steps. And I didn't want to take up that much room in my yard. I don't have that much extra room to have all these like stairs everywhere. So I notched these in, you know, routed them out, made them really strong, you know, and then put grab holds up here so that when you turn around and go down, you have something to hold on to. And for going over the pool, I didn't want to make it really tall because I was afraid of getting the, the transition between, you know, the, the platform, you know, and, and the cake steps would be hard. So this is a two by six here. You can see here, I 45'd it and notched it out. So now that's, that's three and a half inches, which is the, uh, the width of a two by four. And I made sure to do this in between the plastic posts so I could have this as close to the metal rail as possible. So there is, I do have like a half inch gap between the metal, the metal cap there and the deck. So it's not, they're not like pushing on each other. And for anchoring this thing down, I just leveled out some uh, deck stone caps and, um, and I do have some cement screws. If you look closer there, I went ahead and screwed them in there. So to help keep this thing steady, I have it on all four posts. And then on the, on the ladder, I also have them. You can see the little blue screw there. I got those little standard uh, cap blocks there, like sunken, so they're level, level with the ground. Okay, now of course I would have loved to have made a video as I was doing it, but again, I don't like make videos when I don't know what I'm doing, and this one here would have been impossible to do because I had to redo every step. So I hope that with the visuals from, you know, me showing you here, along with the clips from the instructions and stuff like that, that I am able to like help solve some of the problems you guys are coming up with. Give you a couple of the tips uh, that you just weren't told or weren't shown, and let you know to be careful with the instructions because they're gonna maybe be wrong and definitely gonna be incomplete, okay? Uh, the only thing that had perfect constructions uh, was our little um, robo cleaner thing, <laughs> which really has nothing to do with the main pool itself. Now that I got the pool up, I can just chill, but I tell you what, building this thing made me really want to do this. <laughs> So that's a wrap. 
If you guys are doing one of these pulls, I wish the best of luck to you. Take it easy, try not to get stressed out too much when you do. Step back because it doesn't get better if you just keep fighting it. Step back and then, and then when you're calm, come back and do it again. Okay, please subscribe to my channel. Check out our website. Another video for you to check out as well. You guys have a great one.